and I, the Wrestle Vessel, would just like to give a little plug to some of my merchandise for sale. We got wrestling videotapes, wrestling DVDs, both ones on clearance. We got autographed cards, autographed 8x10s, rare 1989 and 1990 8x10s released by the WWF. We got some classic books. Um, both wrestling, sports, and other kind of books. We got a Spin Fighter set of Razor Ramon and Bam Bam Bigelow, and much more. So please contact me, Mr. Wrestling Tape One, on YouTube, aka the Wrestle Vessel, and watch more great videos of the Wrestle Vessel and the Aftershock right here on YouTube. Welcome to One Minute. What the hell? So here we are playing the Sega Saturn, and we're playing Gex. The very, very first Gex on the uh, Sega Saturn and also on the PlayStation and the 3DO. And we have the little introduction right here. Crystal Dynamics. It all started so simply. And here we have a little introduction before the game begins. Routine of nude funker size, fired up the Barca lounger, grabbed a quick bite to eat, and prepared to watch... And here we have the actual title screen right here. Very, very awesome title screen. And we have an option menu, we can check that out. In the option menu, we basically have the uh, idea of how to play this game. We're gonna start and see what happens here. No while since I played this. So right now we're going into the cemetery. Let's get back to the mystery van. Have a little uh, Scooby Doo reference there. That's pretty cool. And now we're in the first level over here. Let's figure out the controls for this damn game. It's been so long. There we go. This one's for Johnny. It's been a long ass time since I played this game. It's like one of the uh, earlier Sega Saturn games and PlayStation games. It's for the time the graphics are actually pretty good. And there is a run button somewhere on here. Here it is. It's tail time. Very very good platform on the Sega Saturn. It's a classic. Uh, no matter what console it is, it's actually a pretty decent game. So we just warped into a different section of the level over here. I'll tell you that, when you don't play this game for a long time, the controls kind of throw you off. Then it takes maybe a couple minutes and then the controls are like... Very, very familiar once again. Very, very awesome uh, gameplay on this game. Damn TVs uh, blew up, I believe. Yep. For me, you shouldn't have. Yep, this is the end of the level right here. Uh, very, very easy platform to play, but it's very fun. But basically, we have to look for a remote. Uh, the first time around, I didn't find the remote. That's something we definitely need to find. See, this is one of those games that helped transition uh, 16 and 32-bit consoles. This looks like almost something that would be on a 16-bit console, but it definitely displays uh, the characteristics of a 32-bit console. Uh, mainly because the way the textures look and uh, a lot of the things that stick out in this game, the coloration of the, the actual textures themselves. I'll say that overall this game right here is definitely an awesome platformer on the Saturn. Oh, that's a classic. It's a fairly well-known game, so I said back then the game was fairly well-known. It's not a rare gem at all. Uh, the game is definitely worth getting, though. If you do find the game, 
on the PlayStation or the Sega Saturn. I do prefer the Saturn version, but uh, the game itself is also on no matter what console it is. Hey, Don King! Thank you. 